I am back at sunny Brands Hatch. Sunny at the moment, might rain later. I'm doing my level three California Superbike School. I did level one, I think, in 2019. 2020, spent the time sat at home masturbating. 2021, I did my level two. 2022, I'm doing my level three. So as I say, back at Brands Hatch, should be a fantastic day. We've got the sunshine, not too hot, only about 20 degrees. So my 36 degree Donington day we did the other month. This is blessed in uh, 20 degrees, absolutely lovely. But this is level three, lots to learn. This is all about body position. And this is one of the things I really struggle with, certainly my left handers. My right hand as I feel I'm not too bad, but my left hand body position is all wrong. So hoping to really improve that today. But uh, before we crack on though, you know what we've got to do? Job C, roll the intro. This is the bike we're doing the drills on. So ZX10R, strapped down on a dolly, so obviously you can get on it, hang on and off, you know, without uh, going over, <laughs> even with my 20 stone on it. So first couple of drills we've been doing is just about, you know, what, what you're doing with your bum on approaching to a corner. So as you come into a corner, you should get your, your ass in position, you know, before you get to the corner, so before you even start braking. So if it's a right-hander, you know, move half your cheek, over onto the seat, but leave your knees locked onto the tank. And then, you know, as soon as you start going around the corner, you can hang your knee out and sort of hang your upper body off a little bit, but leave yourself all locked on. That was the first drill. What we've just learned now is transitioning from left to right. This is the knee to knee drill, moving around the bike smoothly. So, you know, keeping the bike in contact with your knees all the time, so you're gripping the bike. Knee to knee, session three. So it's a little bit tricky doing a video on the California Superbike School because you're not allowed to record any of the briefings with the instructors. You're not allowed to record any of the classroom sessions. So putting a video together is a little bit tricky. Um, so I'm trying to try and talk you through what I'm trying to do in each of the sessions. It's going to be a lot of my bottom in this video, I'm afraid. But this is the knee to knee drills. The first part of the day is all about the lower body position and knee to knee is basically moving across that bike, you know, in the three elements I spoke about. So locking in, moving across and then shifting your ass across at the end. So I'll see if I can uh, give you a demonstration of that. So coming to the corner, I move to the middle and then I drop down to the right. It, it's a little bit, you know, I was, I was sort of practicing. I'm not very, you've got to try and make it a smooth movement. I'm a little bit jerky. Let's try again on this left hander. So to the middle and then, across, so I'm not doing it in one smooth movement. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of moving across the bike in phases. Let's try again. Come on, Chops, you can do it this time. Middle, no, I'm, oh dear, no. no. But again, I've, I've cocked that right up. I've not done it in a smooth movement. I'm, doing it in separate motions, if you like. So the next drill is called the hip flick. Now basically, when you're in a corner, you move your hips onto the other side of the bike in preparation for flipping, flip-flopping the other way, using your inside leg to pull you over. So it's all quite detailed, very difficult to sort of explain to you without sort of demonstrating it, really. Um, I've, I've got the rear camera set up on the bike, so hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm trying to do when I go around. But rather than bringing it around in like three separate steps where you're coming from left onto the bike, then off the other side, you're pulling yourself all the way across. So this is useful if you've got you know, a tight flip flop, where you've got to get across the bike quickly and cleanly without you know, destabilizing it. So uh, yeah, the knee flick, I think, it, hip flick, hip flick, I think it's cool. In this one, we can use two gears, light brake. So uh, let's give it a whirl. What are we doing? Hip flick. Two gears, light brakes. Yeah, cold tires, last session before lunch, I take it forward. The California Superbike School isn't a track day, it's a school day. So they limit your use of gears, they limit your use of brakes, so you're not riding at 100%. They say ride at 70-80%, so you've got time to actually learn the drills you're meant to be doing. 
So now I'm going to do the hip flick. So this is the one moving across the bike in a smooth motion. There we go. So sort of from left to right. This is how I sort of normally, I'd say, move around on the bike. Ooh, little touch down there. And also another point is to stay moved over on the bike. You see how I didn't move my body across to the middle of the bike for the straight? Because there's another right hander coming up. Don't move around. They stay on the right hand side of the bike. If you've done a right hand and there's another one coming, conserve your strength. So here we go, another little flick through here. So this is a little left hander. I'm on the left hand side of the bike. Now I'm gonna move across in one motion to the right hand side. And I found that it's just giving you multiple tools to go around the corner, whether you want to do it as a sort of stage or whether you want to flick across like that. It's giving, just giving you more options. Here we go. It's, uh, let's see, I've moved to the left already, well before the corner. Get it done before you start braking. You don't unsettle the bike in the corner then. I've left this bit in because look at this guy on the GS up ahead. The amount of corner speed this guy's doing around clearways in a minute, but he's not shifting off the bike. I'm not here to comment on other people's riding, but look at the look at the lean angle he's getting out of that GS. That is quite impressive. Good old tractor. On this guy on the XR here, he's, he's, he's hanging off the bike, he's got a bit of corner speed there, I, I undertake him, I think that's it, he's done, he's gone, but oh no, he, he's not had enough, he's not having that, he's coming back through again, so we have to repeat, so uh, a little bit of an undercut here, see you later sir, second time lucky, we pull that off, look at that ass. we don't get many of those to the pound. It's like my charging solution. <laughs> no, it's not a washing line for my dirty socks. What I am finding, since I lowered my foot rests, I'm getting the, the pegs touching down quite a lot. There's a bit of, a bit of grinding of the, the foot rests. But actually, I can't see too much on there. Could actually be the brake lever touching down, actually. I think it's the brake lever, the end of the tip of the brake lever touching down, not the foot rests. So it's after lunch, we've done one training uh, session since lunchtime. Now looking at, obviously we've had the lower body, bod lower body position sorted this morning with hanging off, how to work your knees against the bike, how to grip, how to get your knee down, how to, your whole lower body locking on. The one we've just done is, uh, it's about bringing your upper body. So if you're in a turn, you're over as much as possible, your knees down, you know, how to get a bit extra out of the turn by, by dropping your elbow, basically. So basically bringing your front, your upper body right down, you know, bring, adjust your hand position, get your elbow down. So uh, just done that and it was, it was absolutely fantastic. It was like a, a light bulb moment, a bit like level one, where you, that, those initial drills, you know. It was like that, and at one point coming around, you know, the main right-hander, I can't think of what it's called, I thought it was gonna get my elbow down. I, you know, I was hanging off that much, I felt like my elbow was gonna to touch down at any moment. It's probably miles away, we'll see from the video, but it felt like I was gonna get my elbow down. It was just, you know, it just changes your whole line, gives you so much more in the corner, you know, it's just unbelievable. Session four, hook turn. First couple of laps with this one, I was just experimenting with you know, how much difference it makes to throw your upper body as far off the bike as possible. So you can see I'm really extreme with my head right out. I mean, your head weighs, what, eight pounds? I've probably got 20 pounds worth of moves there. So the more weight you can move off of the bike in a corner, the less you have to lean the bike over and potentially you know, the faster you can go in the corner, the more corner speed you can carry. So the first couple of laps, I just experimented with how this adjusts your line, how moving your weight off the bike in extreme amounts actually affects the line of the motorcycle. And this was a real game changer for me. So as, I, as we went on during the session, I sort of got lower, um, readjusted my hand position so you can really get your elbow down. 
And as I mentioned at the beginning now, I thought I may actually get my elbow down here <laughs> on some of the right hand waves. I think it's clear ways that, that fast left, the fast right hander, which is coming up. I thought I may actually get my elbow down here. Getting your head out, bringing your elbow right down. A little glance down there to see how close I was. I was, I was miles away. Slowly building the speed up, slowly getting used to how hanging off that much actually affects your line. So you have to sort of readjust all of your your lines. And here we go. I'm, I'm, that's the peg touching down. I'm thinking, is the elbow going to go down? Is the elbow going to go down? <laughs> I'm miles away, but it felt really close. And it was amazing how much difference hanging off the bike like that made. We just had the training for the last session. It's about picking the bike up now. So when you're right down like this, you know, to how to pick it back up again, get it back on the center of the tire so you can put the power down earlier. So um, yeah, pretty excited about this one, but I'm, I'm uh, feeling it now. I'm knackered, my legs are gone. I'm really tired, so. Uh, Got to try and make sure I don't bin it. I had it spin up a couple of times coming out the bends in that last one. I felt it spin up. So, uh, but it was it was so good. It was so good. The instructor, Martin, not Martin, Gavin. Gavin's been brilliant. Really, really brilliant. Talking me through, and he said he was enjoying just sitting behind me. And uh, yeah, Gavin's fantastic. Really. Oh, all the instructors I've had here. That's the third different instructor I've had. They've all been fantastic. So you know the. the the, the actual day that California Superbike School put on is so good. It's so good, honestly. You learn so much. I wish I'd done it sooner, to be honest, but uh, we're here now. One more session. This one we can do, there's no restrictions on brakes, gears, do whatever you want, but just don't take it home in carrier bags. I've got to ride home at the end of this. Last session pickup. The fuel empty. light's on now. I feel there. Who did you bid it many? What, 18, 15, 18 minutes? Yeah. Alright, good 25 mile minute. Let's wait to put over the lead. Drive back. Yeah, that's right. So see, see me again. Yeah. I can have a little bit so I can catch up and yeah. then we'll go again. Brilliant. Nice one. Cheers, up. This is Andrew, who was also doing his, uh, I think he's in a level four on the day actually. He's got an R1. He said he'd sit behind me with his GoPro, try and get a bit of footage to see how I look uh, from another bike. I'm going to shut up now and let you enjoy the screaming note of the motorcycles as I get completely into this.
that was the last session. <laughs> I'm absolutely shattered now, but my God, I've never been so fast around Brown's Hatch. I was sure I was going to get a elbow down at some point there, but I didn't. I was trying. Um, I couldn't quite get, you had to counter steer. Once you were right off the bike, you had to counter steer to get the bike up right so you can put the power on. But I was confusing myself as to which way you had to pull the bars to bring the bike back up again. So I was struggling a bit with that. Obviously, I've got, I think I'm going to have to come back for level four just to master that bit. But I'm going to go have a chat with Gavin now. Um, he was behind me. I've got some good footage of him behind me. But that was, um, that was incredible. That was incredible. I've never ridden like that before. Amazing. Let's go see what Gavin has to say. I can't record it, unfortunately. It's not allowed. So I'll tell you in a minute. There you have it. California Superbike School Level 3. Absolutely fantastic. If you haven't done any sort of track track training before and you fancy doing it, I can't recommend California Superbike School enough. Level 1s through to 3. I've done now, there's still level four for me to do next year. Level four is basically working further on any of the uh, drills from the first three uh, training sessions. So if you need to work on any of those, that's what level four is all about. And you can do level four as many times as you like. Absolutely brilliant. If you want to do it, look in the, I've got links below in the description. I also pop it on the screen for their website. You know, there's nothing else for this year, but the dates for next year will be released soon. And they always sell out really rather quickly. So be quick, get yourself booked on. And it's, it's based around track skills, but these skills you can also take to the road as well. There's a lot of visual skills, which are good for road riding. It's not just about the track. But there we go, guys. Thanks for watching as always. And I'll see you on the next time.